Hi, I'm Larry Becker. We put together a three-part series where we'll be discussing a very interesting tool for controlling light called a neutral density filter. We'll start with the basics, like the different types of ND filters. We'll talk about the uses in both still shooting and video production. And I'll give you tips and tricks so that you can get the most out of your ND filter experience. I'll even show you a new invention that lots of pros don't know about that'll make things even easier. As photographers, we use our cameras and lenses and all the settings that they have to offer as tools to create the images that we have in our minds. Even new shooters understand that there are gear limitations that affect our shots, like when their shutter speed isn't fast enough to freeze action and they get motion blur. In most cases, you can make some adjustments on your camera or your lens and capture what you want. But even then, we run up against limitations. Maybe there's not enough light, or maybe there's too much light. Now, if there's not enough light and you've made all the adjustments that you can with your camera, like opening up the aperture or boosting the ISO and slowing down the shutter speed, then the next thing to do is add light, like a flash or a constant light. On the other hand, if things are too bright, you stop down your aperture, you bump up the shutter speed, and you pull the ISO down to the minimum. And when that's still not enough, you put sunglasses on your lens. That's what we call a neutral density or ND filter. ND filters can help in several situations. If you have a target aperture you want to use to achieve a shallow depth of field, but you're shooting in sunshine. With that much light, even ISO 100 and a fast shutter speed might still let in too much light. Adding an ND filter, like this Hoya Pro ND, will block enough light so you can get the shot. Another possibility is a long exposure to smooth out motion. Maybe you've done long exposures at night to gather enough light for a proper exposure. But what if it's daylight and you want to take a 20 or 30 second exposure of a waterfall so that it smooths out the water and makes it look silky? Well, adding an ND filter can sufficiently cut light so you can do those longer exposures. There are some other specific uses for some types of ND filters, but we'll get into those special circumstances and special filters in our second video. ND filters come in a couple of different mounts. There's the round screw-on mount and the square filters that you slide into a mounted holder. And there are pros and cons with each of these mounting systems. For instance, if you want to mount a round screw-on filter, you need a filter that's the same size as the front of your lens. And then, you need either differently sized sets of filters or you need to use something called a step up or step down ring so that those filters fit differently sized lenses that you might own. With a simple kit like this set of three Tiffin ND filters, you pick the density, in other words, the darkness that you want, and then you screw that onto your lens. This particular kit comes with filters marked 0.6, 0.9 and 1.2. And these reduce the light coming into your lens by two, three, and four stops respectively. And because there are filter threads on both sides of each filter, you can even stack the filters for more light reduction. You can mix and match to get five, six, or seven stops of light reduction. And with all three together, you'll stop down the light by nine stops. Just note that combining several filters together is likely to degrade your image quality and you can also cause some vignetting on wider angle lenses. Something you'll notice though is that nine stops of neutral density light blocking means that you can't even see through the filters, even in bright light. So you can't see to focus manually and autofocus won't work either. You'll want to focus first, then flip off your autofocus switch, screw on your ND filter, and take the shot. In almost all cases, when you use an ND filter, your exposure will be so long that you'll need to use a tripod and remote shutter release. And also, working in the manual shooting mode is a necessity so that you have full control over both the shutter speed and the aperture settings. The next challenge is to figure out how long your shutter will need to be open. An easy way to do this is to set up an exposure without the ND filter, and think of that as your reference exposure. Then, make a note of your shutter speed, screw on your filter or filters, and apply the number of additional stops indicated by the filter you're using to your reference exposure. For example, if you have a base exposure of 1 60th of a second without the ND filters, 
Once you add a four stop filter, your exposure time will now be a quarter of a second at the same aperture and ISO settings. If that seems a little complex, don't worry. For calculating these times and even longer times, there are usually companion reference cards and even inexpensive ND calculator apps that can be handier than a reference card. Earlier I mentioned square filters. These simplify the process of filter installation on the fly because once the square mount lens adapter is in place, you just slide the desired square filter into place. And because most of these filter holders are made with several channels, you can stack these filters as well. Always start your stack closest to the lens to avoid a light gap. One last thing that I want to mention is light leakage. In broad daylight or with a strong light source behind you, it's possible that enough light can enter through your optical viewfinder to affect your images when making very long exposures. You'll want to use a viewfinder cap to block out that light. I've even seen people use gaffer's tape or putty, but a cap is going to be the best choice. And along those same lines, one of the drawbacks of using square filters is that they're not sealed against your lens, which can also cause some flare if light is oblique to the direction of your lens. It's always a good idea to shield your camera and lens from direct light whenever possible to prevent flare, especially during long exposures and strongly lit conditions. Since most any time you add a filter, you also eliminate the ability to attach a lens hood. Just holding your hand or a hat over the lens could improve your exposures. In the next video, we'll dig a little deeper looking at actual setups and results. We'll get into ND filter uses that should spark your creativity, and we'll show you some next level ND filter types and helpful gadgets that people love for both stills and video. That's the next Neutral Territory video, and it's called Beyond the Basics. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. We all know the difference a great teacher makes. They inspire you, challenge you, and push you to do the things you never thought you could. For creatives, that means you've got to know your tools inside and out whether it's Photoshop or photography, lighting or Lightroom, InDesign or After Effects. And while there are free videos out there, you have to watch 30 bad ones just to find a decent one. And a lot of times, the techniques are either outdated, complicated, or just plain wrong. What we need is a better way to learn, one that connects amazing teachers with creative people all over the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A thriving educational community with nothing but the most talented, engaging, and respected teachers in the industry. Then we simplify the whole learning process with short, clear, concise classes. That's exactly what we've created for you right here at Kelby One.